Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Lena. Welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to recommend you some horror books. I'm kind of late, but Summer Win is happening or was happening last week and it actually got me inspired to read more horror books. <laughs> So today I want to recommend some horror books to you. I also have a couple of horror novellas in here. Well, novellas? Graphic novels. That's what I meant. So let's just get started. I still need to recommend one of my favorite books. I, I, I don't know why I like this one so much, but this is The Body Snatchers. This is a classic sci-fi. Uh, I think it's very like well known, but it's basically about this notion that aliens came down and they are replacing us because they are taking our bodies, not literally, but they are mimicking our bodies and mimicking our lives. And it's just super cool, dude. I love this one. I've been liking every single little remake that they made of this book, like show-wise, book-wise, I don't care. But I just love the concept so much. In a way, it reminds me of V, but without the supplanting part. Then, I've talked about this book not that long ago, but The Gathering. Uh, I love this. <laughs> it's been such a long time since I've read a good book about vampires, and this was the one. I don't know why vampire books are so hard to come across. Like, they're such, a, they're such cool creatures, dude. Like, the notion of a creature that lives forever and cannot die and remains young it's just such a cool concept, dude, and you can make such cool horror with it, but it's really underutilized for some reason. Like, there are always just like more of a love interest than like a horror tool, which is something that I hate. But this one is very similar to The Passage in a way that we know vampires exist, and The Passage is a post apocalyptic book, but this one is a sci-fi dystopia where vampires live among us and they have their own reservoirs when they can thrive and live basically because humans have hunted them down so badly that they are t almost extinct. So we're sitting in Alaska and several years back a murder happened. The This clan was blamed basically and a little war happened between them. So now, several years later, another murder happened and they are blaming this clan again, but they are not willing to take the blame this time. Super cool, I really, really liked it. It has a couple of POVs in a linear story. I just really enjoyed it overall, honestly. It just, it brought me back. It brought me back to something like 30 Days of Dark. Amazing. Then I have here The Night Eaters, which it's a very confusing graphic novel. This is by the same authors as Monstrous. And man, this is weird. It's so hard to explain, but we're basically going to follow a couple and their, and their children, basically. And we know the mother has a weird secret. She is creepy as hell. She has a secret. We know this. But <laughs> just in front of their house, there is kind of this decrepit, creepy house. They get inside, there might be a monster inside, the children are trapped. They're not kind of, I, I call them children, but they're like young adults, definitely. <laughs> but it's very weird, let me tell you, very, very weird. We have some weird powers, some weird history, but the history of the mother is just the best part of it. And of course the art is beautiful because these authors are just, uh, are just so fucking good together. Like, I fucking can't even, like, it's so... Mm. It's so beautiful. I kind of recommend it, but it's definitely weird. It's definitely the weirder side. It's definitely similar to Monstrous. Like, you will not get it at the first time. It will not be a video of mine if I didn't recommend The Watcher in the Rain. <laughs> this is a horror book set on the Warhammer universe because Warhammer has a special, a special branch called Warhammer Horror. Which is fantastic, by the way, and I highly recommend it because those stories are the best. But this one is the best one. And in here, we are set on a, on a city that is kind of sinking due to the heavy rain and this heavy storm that is going on. We have an emergency going on, people are evacuating, and we follow this character. She tries to get out, but she is confronted with her like fake papers and she's forced to get back and one of the legionnaires goes with her. They get trapped in this sinking city with something watching them. It's amazing, it's an audio drama. This is not written down anywhere. 
and it's just fucking fantastic. I wish I had a print of this, just like, I wish it so badly. I just listen to this every time that I feel like I want something quick, I want something nice, and then I'm out of the reading slump again. Then, I will be recommending you Rouge by Mono Ward. And why I'm recommending you Rouge instead of Bunny? Because I actually prefer Rouge. Why? I don't know. But there's something about cults in horror related to beauty that I fucking love. It's just, it's, I cannot explain it, but I love horror related to beauty. Like when someone is so obsessed with being beautiful that Tom turns in this, in this, in this macabre story. I love that. And Rouge is this. <laughs> Rouge is this. Um, we're going to follow this woman and her mother passed away. She gets the house and in the house she finds this we she finds these beautiful red shoes that lead her once she puts them on to this weird spa <laughs> that is not too far away from her house. Really weird. Really weird. This synopsis sounds bizarre, I know, but I actually really liked it. I feel like I'm very in the unpopular opinion here. But I enjoy this one much more than Bunny. Bunny is very bizarre, but this one has a sprinkle that I love. So this next one is The Hacienda. The Hacienda is very similar to Mexican Gothic. So if you like that one, you're going to really like this. And I kind of love this topic. <laughs> it is a guilty pleasure of mine where a woman marries, uh, they move into the husband's house and something weird is going on. Like something like Rebecca, something like Mexican Gothic, like there's definitely something wrong here. So of course we have like this very weird mansion, this hacienda, and maybe something happened to the wife, the deceased wife of this man before her. So I'm gonna leave it at that because it's definitely more mysterious than the other books. The other ones are definitely more horror focused and this is horror with very a very hardcore fan, a very hardcore like portion of mystery. So I'll let you do that. But I love, it's weird to say, I hate ghost stories, but I love haunted houses. I love creepy houses. Like it's just one of my favorite tropes of all time. Creepy houses, creepy castles, whatever you want to call it. Love it. Then this one is bizarre. Definitely not for everyone. This is tell me I'm worthless which is a very hard story to read but it has definitely very very graphic horror very graphic horror very graphic super graphic it has a lot of trigger warnings check those ones out if you're squeamish definitely and in this we follow the story of three friends the three of them went into a house and only two came out of the house creepy houses you know I'm just going to leave it at that. Take this recommendation. If you are ready to feel some weird shit, read it. If not, let it go. <laughs> because this one is, this one is fucking hard. Like, whew, I struggle so much with some scenes in this book. Like, whew, I was sick to my stomach. It was really hard. Then I do have a physical copy of this book, but again, I do not know where it is because I rearranged my shelves. Well, I didn't rearrange them. I just put the books in like when they fell. And now I do not know where it is, but this is The Devourers. And this is another weird book. <laughs> I don't know why I chose these books, honestly. But this is a narration story about werewolves. It's kind of a diary, to be honest, and kind of a love letter. It's just, it's just weird. That's the, that's definitely the word, weird. I do have to say that for some reason I found the narration and the vocabulary of this book to not be the best, at least for me, that I'm not, um, like, English is not my main language. So I find it kind of hard to follow sometimes. Maybe I should have read, like, if there was an original version of it, but it was really weird. And still, super weird fucking book because you know I'm telling you about the history of werewolves but the main premise is that is that this dude appears and gives this woman this diary leather diary probably real leather diary <laughs> and he's just like yeah translate this 
and that's the story we're reading. It is just so fucking weird, to be honest, it's just so weird. But if you like werewolves, this might be the book for you. It's definitely a different take on werewolves, so check it out. Then, The Low Low Woods, which I also have, but I don't know where. <laughs> this is a graphic novel, uh, it's part of the new like Seal by Joe Hill, and this is probably my favorite one, along with the basketball full of heads. But in here, we're going to be set on this town, and for some reason, in this town, women have lots of memory losses. Mysteriously enough, each time that something iffy is about to happen, they lose their memory, and then they wake up in their beds, or whatever it is. Creepy. Fucking creepy. I love this comic book. It was just so fucking oh, heart-wrenching. I loved it. I mean, you can tell, you can have an idea of what is going on here, but it's really cool. I really liked it. The allegory in this graphic novel is literally for everyone. Even a baby could get this, like what this story means. But definitely check it out. It's really, really good. Then another one, Our Wives Under the Sea, <laughs> which is another bizarre book. <laughs> But the main premise of this book is that we're going to follow this couple and one of them has been living in this um, ocean station under the sea. Now she's back and there's definitely something wrong with her. Definitely something wrong with her. Uh, some weird shit happened in that fucking base. It's just really cool. It's really short, but it was bizarre. It was bizarre. I kind of really liked it, but at the same time, some things were just like, what? So I felt a little bit in the middle there, but still really worth checking out. Then, <laughs> this one, because I love it. I will never get over this book. <laughs> this is Clown on a Cornfield. And this is actually a duology. I almost said a trilogy. This is a duology. And it's a slasher book. And I love it so fucking much because this is just a slasher book. That's it. Think about these slasher books, slasher books, think about these slasher movies in the 80s. You get this feeling by reading this book and I love it so much. I love slasher movies. They're some of my favorites. I just love the genre so much and each time that I have a book or a TV show or a film that is a slasher, I'm on it. And this one is it. Um, basically the main character and her dad move into this town and in this town the mascot is a clown a killer clown and <laughs> they have a party where the whole kind of high school attends and then this fucking dude starts ripping everyone to shreds. I loved it, I loved it. Book 2 is not as good, but book 1 is great. Then, over the last two, this is Gone to See the Riverman, which is definitely less on the gory slasher side and more on the weird, what is going on, psychological type of horror. So in Gone to See the River Man, we're going to follow two sisters. And the thing is, one of them is obsessed with the serial killer. And the serial killer tells her to go to this cabin, find the river man and deliver this man this key that she finds in the cabin, that she will find in the cabin. And she brings her sister along and they get into this way of nightmare into this path of nightmare. And it's just so creepy. It's definitely more like psychological horror than gore and such so if you're more squeamish <laughs> might be for you <laughs> and then the last one definitely not for this skimish this is tender is the flesh <laughs> i recently went uh pescatarian <laughs> so uh now i have full confidence <laughs> recommending this book <laughs> but in here we're set in a dystopian world where it's our world, but in the future, where we have run out of animals due to a plague, and now we harvest humans, we design humans, we grow up humans, humans, and we eat them. We grow humans for food, like unintelligent humans to, to eat them. And the fucking ending of this book is just in fucking insane, to be honest. It just took me by surprise. I still love it till this day. It's just, this is one of these books that I'm so confident recommending because I just feel like it's really cool. It's one of those horror books 
Well, because horror, <laughs> horror in general, used to be a medium to criticize, to uh, subvert um, expectations. Like, it used to be that. It, it wasn't just about ghosts, like you had vampires and vampires reflect or fear of mortality and a fear of death. And some, you know, it used to be like that. <laughs> Not that hard anymore, but some authors still do. And this is one of them. Like, the, the horror in this story is because of an idea, because of a fear that we have. And I love it. I love it so much. This one is fantastic. I highly recommend it. <laughs> so yeah, these are all my recommendations for you. These are all great horror books, great mystery books for you to read. Have you read any of these? Do you have that one horror book that you really, really like? Of, or do you have horror recommendations? Please just let me know because I just really like to read horror. Not paranormal horror though. Don't give me ghosts. I hate ghosts. Not ghosts, please. <laughs> but creepy towns of creepy castles, creepy houses, just all of that. All, everything that's creepy, just give me that. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be all for today. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.